I know this is a racing channel, but today I'm gonna talk about something a little bit different. My real job, instead of being on YouTube, I'm a health inspector. And so one of the things we deal with on a daily basis is sanitizing and disinfecting. You've been to the stores, everything's wiped out. It's hard to get supplies. We know the Lysols and disinfectants are selling out. The, the suppliers are doing their best to restock, but you at home can make a disinfectant out of common household supplies. Let me show you how. This virus is mostly spread person to person through droplets. Viruses can also live on hard surfaces for hours to days. The data out there is all over the place, so it's best to make sure you frequently disinfect hard surfaces. Those hard surfaces that you wanna disinfect in your home, and if you're a business, in places that people commonly touch, doorknobs, tables, chairs, light switches, in the restrooms, the faucets on the handles, the toilet, the urinal flushers, anything that people commonly touch needs to be disinfected. Let me show you how to make a disinfecting solution with something you can pick up almost anywhere. So a little bit about bleaches. The active ingredient is sodium hypochlorate. And these are two bleaches. I'll pick this one up from Lowe's hardware store the other day. And you can see this is a germicidal bleach. Right there, this is the generic version. 8.25% and it yields 7.86% available chlorine. Now this Clorox brand over here, this is something that's very important looking at these percentages. 6.05% sodium hypochlorite and available chlorine 5.75%. So this is very important. So if you're mixing this one and this one, then this one's gonna have a little bit more chlorine concentration. And on these labels, almost all of them, just go to any any store, your Family Dollar, your Walmart, your Lowe's, any place that's out there and find a gallon of bleach and then turn it around. And most of it, you see they even claim it on the label. And most of these things are very effective at disinfecting. Bleaches are, are good. Of course, they're hard on surfaces sometimes. Uh, you wanna follow the instructions on the dilution. It's very important to dilute this. And so viruses are, are capsules, they have capsids. And so the virus is protected. And so what this sodium hypochlorate, what the chlorine does is it, attack, it, it attacks the, the capsid. It breaks it up and that's what kills the virus. So bacteria are much easier to kill. Viruses are very difficult to kill. So that's why it has to be a little stronger. In a restaurant, we generally require, if you're using a chlorine-based product, we only require 50 to 100 parts per million. So when you want to disinfect against viruses, the concentration has to be a lot stronger. And generally about 1,000 to 2,000 parts per million is effective. And of course, contact time makes a difference. So the, the more time it's in contact, the more it's gonna do work. And if that free available chlorine is what is gonna kill the viruses. So let's take a look at this Clorox brand real fast. This is the name brand, a lot of people know this is new and they have a whole bunch of different ones and they've got different names, different things. So let's look at the label here. So disinfecting. So let's talk about parts per million a little bit. This is the dilution table. So this one is very important. So a third of an ounce of this product to one gallon of water gives you 150 parts per million of active available free chlorine. So that's gonna be good for, for bacteria. That's not gonna work for viruses. So let's look at this one. The CDC right now is recommending a third of a cup to one gallon of water. And you can see four ounces of this is a little bit more than the, a third of a cup, it's a half a cup. And a gallon of water will give you 1,800 parts per million. So that is going to be effective against most viruses, including the coronavirus. So this is what this one is says it's for. Look at all the, the, the things that this thing can kill. It can kill a lot of stuff. Avian flu, the human coronavirus is here. Human coronavirus. So this is effective at disinfecting and killing the coronavirus on hard surfaces. So uh, it's very simple. Uh, a third of a cup is what the CDC is recommending now. If you wanted to go uh, following these instructions, which they always recommend you do, follow the instructions on the container. 
then you would use four ounces. So you would use, that's the Spanish version, but you would use, <laughs> you would use four ounces of this product in one gallon of water. So very simple to use. Now this one over here, this says this one is a little stronger. This one's at 8.25% sodium hypochlorite. If you did the same thing, I'm gonna do the math, but if you used the same amount, four ounces in a gallon of water, then this one gave you 1800 parts per million. This would probably be like 2000 or 2200 parts per million. So this would also work as, as a good disinfecting solution. Um, so the CDC recommend, recommendations. So here we go. We're gonna show you how to mix it real fast. I got me a nice spray bottle, 28 ounces. And this right here is the fill line. It goes to here. So what you would do, and of course you wanna always label your bottles. So in this amount of water, four teaspoons of bleach is going to give you somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 parts per million, maybe 1,000. And these are some, some test strips. These are what, what you can use to check this stuff. As long as your bleach is not expired and as long as you're mixing it the same every time, then, you know, these test strips should read the same every time. So here's my gallon of uh, water that I'm gonna use. For a gallon, I've got a third of a cup of bleach. If I put this in here, this one said use a quarter, so this one's gonna give me about probably 1,200 to 1,500 parts per million. So let's try it out. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we can um, get some disinfectant made so you can use it to keep your household or your business safe. Okay, so here we go. So we got bleach, so make sure you don't get this on your clothes, of course. So we're gonna simply open this. This one is the germicidal bleach. So first, we're gonna mix this bottle. So here we're gonna use four teaspoons in this amount of water. Okay, there's one. It always amazes people. It takes so little. Bleach can go a very long ways. So here's teaspoon number four and we're gonna mix this with water. And of course, uh, you want to make sure you mix this stuff. You should hopefully, in theory, go through all this in a day, but every day you wanna remix it. And the reason why is chlorine, free chlorine, when it's out there, it, it works great, but it's very unstable. So when the heat, the sunlight, the high temperatures, if this is mixed properly in a day or two days or four days, depending on where it's stored, this stuff will become weaker. And so once it drops to a, a low percentage, then it's no longer gonna be effective. So here we go, we got a, our third of a cup. So we're gonna do, this is, now the, the instructions on this one recommend a quarter, uh, half a cup. So that's a little bit more than this, but we're gonna use a third and see what we get here. Very careful to not spill this all over my clothes. Okay. Okay, so now let's go put some water in these real fast and see what kind of uh, mixtures we got. Okay, guys, so just like that, I'm back. And remember, I said this was a 28 ounce bottle. So I filled it up to the line. So now these are your test strips. So you always wanna make sure that you are reading the instructions. The recommendation initially was a quarter a cup of bleach and they, they made it stronger to a third of a cup recently. And I guess that they were just trying to cover more, more chlorine solutions to make sure that it was actually going to be effective. This time there's been no known transmissions from hard surfaces to, to a person, but the risk is there. If, if the virus is on this surface, it's alive, it's, it's, it's viable, and I touch it and I get it on my hands, and then I wipe my eyes or my nose or my mouth, a mucous membrane, there is a chance that I'm going to get exposed and possibly get sick. So these are the test strips, really hard to see, but there's a little white thing on the end and you'll see it turn colors in just a minute. Check it out, same color. So we're gonna let it sit, we're gonna flop it off and we're gonna let it sit there. See how it instantly changes colors there. And that's a, that's a dip, it's where you dip it, shake it off and then let it sit. Okay guys, so you can see, it's gonna be kind of hard for you to see the color variance, but these are brown and green. It looks like, um, let's see if we can get it a little closer. So somewhere between, see that brown, 1500, 2000, a little bit of green in there. And this was the spray bottle one. That one's probably closer to a thousand. 
So you can see, and all, that's all you do. So you match up the colors if you got a test strip. So if you don't have a test strip, and this stuff said to, to mix it a little stronger, so they recommended a half a cup for uh, four ounces, a half a cup for a gallon would give you 1,800 parts per million. So we were at a third of a cup. So that that's about right. We were between 1,000 and 1,500 parts per million. So now this right here, spraying it, on this hard surface, just like this, letting it sit for five to 10 minutes, and then going back, if there was coronavirus or norovirus or any other type of virus on this surface, it's gonna be dead. So this is how you create a in-home, do-it-yourself disinfecting solution. So y'all be safe. So that's it, guys. So y'all can make your in-home, do-it-yourself disinfecting solution be safe hope everything goes smooth and life gets back to normal very quickly y'all take care be safe